Hello everyone, this is Mike Govin from Lambda Research. Today, I want to talk about creating sources in Trace Pro. There are three different sources that we can create. Grid sources, surface sources, and file sources. You can find these underneath the source tab in the system tree. The first type of source, the grid source, by default has a nice little X in front of it. That means that it's currently non-active. If I double left mouse click, we can see that grid source right there at Z of zero, and that's our origin. So let's take a look at the grid source dialog. There are four different tabs that we can set up to create a grid source. The first one is the grid setup, where you specify the grid boundary, the grid pattern, the grid position and orientation, and where this grid is going to start from and in what direction. The beam setup allows us to specify what the spatial and angular profile of the beam are and the beam orientation. By default, it's collimated. Polarization is set to unpolarize. We can, of course, change this. And the wavelength is set to be middle visible, which is 0.5461 microns. So at this point in time, if I hit uh, the Modify button, that would create that. But I want to go back and change the grid setup so it's a little bit smaller and that we can see that it starts at a Z of 1, so we're not starting right at the beginning of the lens. If I hit Modify over here, it does that. And by clicking, by using the left mouse button on the X, we can change this to be an active source, and then we can ray trace this particular system. In doing so, we see only the specular rays. I've set the ray trace options to be 0.1, so I don't see Fresnel-type interactions with these particular lenses. And we see that nice specular beam coming to an image. The second type of source that I'd like to talk about is a surface source. So first of all, I'm going to left-click in front of the grid source to turn it off. And I'm going to look at a surface-type source. Well, what can we make a source in this particular system look like? Well, I can make it be the third, the back of the third lens. There we are, I've selected it in the system tree. And all I have to do is right click to get to the properties dialog, bring that up, go to the surface source, and specify the mission type. First of all, notice that if I select a surface property, I have a whole bunch of set of catalogs. These catalogs are all the different LEDs that come along with Trace Pro. Cree, Luxion, Osram are here, for instance. Also, we can use the utility, the surface source property utility, to create this surface property property, which would be of any type of source property. It could be of any angular type information. You can also specify, for instance, a batwing type distribution if you wanted. A uh, second type of source property would be just straight flux. I can specify units of radiometric and photometric. I can go through and specify an angular distribution. In this case, I'll just specify Lambertian. I can specify this Lambertian to all the rays in terms of this pattern. I can specify the number of watts and the number of rays I want to trace here. I can also specify both discrete and calculated wave bands. And if I add this particular distribution, it then creates my surface source for me. I can then apply it. And now if I go to the source tab, not only do I have a grid source, but I also have a surface source. This one happens to be active now, and I can ray trace it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the old ray data memory, which gets rid of the grid source. And now I can re ray trace, and I can see all the rays coming out in a Lambertian distribution from my third lens. So this is a second way. And of course, I can make any type of surface be an emitter. So for instance, I'm going to turn the rays off here. I'm going to create a sphere. So here's another surface source that I'm actually creating. I can go back to the model, go to that particular sphere, go to the surface, and once again do the same thing I did before, create a property that's a surface source that's a Lambertian emitter from this particular surface. Let's do an irradiance one this time. And that's a pretty good setup. I'll do 1,000 rays again, same visible. I can now apply this to that particular sphere. And if I go back into the Source tab, I can see I have two different sources here, and I have them both emit. And there we go. I now have emission, and I can turn the rays on and show them. And so now I have two sources. So in other words, there's an infinite number way of creating these sources, and we can create them using multiple objects, multiple surfaces, with multiple angular information, with multiple ray patterns. So this is all available in TracePo right from the default grid and surface setup. A third type of surface source could be something where I created a very unusual shape, maybe in CAD, imported it, and then applied these properties. So I could do things like cutouts, I could do hexagonal shapes, I can do anything you possibly think of, and so an infinite number of possibilities are available here. Finally, the last way of creating a source is a file source. So I'm going to turn off these two sources, and I'm going to get them completely erased from our ray data memory, and now we're going to start anew. So here we've got our system, and we want to create a file source. The way to do this is to create some type of source, maybe a grid or a surface source, or get it from a catalog from, from the web, and then download it and keep this file in a format that we can then read. 
usually these are just ASCII files, they're text files, and every single row has an XYZ position, an XYZ direction vector, and the flux value. So in Trace Pro, this would be this would be a file that looks something like this, where you have a source file header, and then every single row would specify the XYZ position, the XYZ direction vector, since these are going down the Z axis, then my one is going to be sitting right here in Z, and finally the flux associated with each one of these rays. And there would be thousands of these rays depending on how many I actually read in from the file. So this is what a file source looks like, and we could then bring that into the file source dialog by left mouse clicking on it, right clicking, saying define, file source, and find that particular file. I've called this one cook.txt, so I'm just going to type it in as the file name over here. Notice this is an ASCII file in ASCII format. There's my source file type. I'm going to say open, and it's going to open it. I'm going to give it a name. I'm just going to call it cook. And I'm going to say I'm going to trace every nth ray, scale flux, just keep it as it is, don't change it. My, utes are, uh, my units are radiometric, and I can go in here, and I can measure for the wavelength the number of rays, which are 857, and I'm going to insert them, and now I have a file source. You can see the file source shown here. This is the general size of those particular rays. So we put a sphere up here to show where they're actually positioned. I have put them right in front of our cook triplet. And if I ray trace them now, you're going to see the rays go right through. And once again, they're a very nice collimated beam that we're just shaking to make sure that the whole system images. So this is what our file source looks like. Three different types, grid, surface source, file source. I've shown you how to create all of these. You can create your own file of file sources if you like and try them out. And if you have any questions, you know, just email sales at lambdares.com if you'd like to have any other variation or another kind of demo of this type. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.